a change, I begin today's climate tracker with some rare good news for the planet. The Earth's ozone layer is on track to recover completely, and this is according to the United Nations assessment. The chemicals present in the layer will completely phase out from the entire world. The layer is therefore expected to recover to 1980 levels by the year 2040 for most of the world. In March 1985, 28 countries signed up to the Vienna Convention for the protection of the ozone layer. When the ozone layer is depleted, this layer, which absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation, tends to reach the surface without any obstruction. This in turn causes potential harm to humans and other living things. UV rays can damage the DNA and may even lead to skin cancer. The ozone layer began depleting in the 1970s. In, 19, in 1987, the Vienna Accord paved the way for the landmark Montreal Protocol. This protocol that sets the targets for phasing out the production and consumption of ozone-depleting substances. The treaty was eventually ratified by all UN members, making it one of the most successful environmental treaties ever. And now, the collective human action to save the ozone layer has worked as planned and the UN says that the layer may recover in decades. Ozone layer is on track to recover within four decades. In a new report, a UN-backed scientific panel confirmed that the phase out of nearly 99 percent of banned ozone depleting substances has succeeded in safeguarding the ozone layer leading to a notable recovery of the ozone layer in the upper stratosphere and, and decreased human exposure to harmful ultraviolet rays from the sun. Let's now try to understand that how this layer actually works and why is it crucial for life on Earth. Take a look at this report. The ozone layer is situated in the stratosphere at an altitude of 15 kilometers and protects Earth from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. Without it, there'd be no plants, no animals. None of us would be here. A natural shield, it comes under seasonal attack in both polar regions. This is partly due to the lingering presence of man-made chlorine-based compounds, or CFCs, once widely used in refrigerators and consumer aerosols. But most damage is caused by very cold weather, when water vapor and nitric acid molecules condense into clouds in the lower stratosphere. These clouds in turn become a bed where chlorine molecules gobble up ozone. Traditionally, the layer would thin out from spring until December, but this cycle now continues throughout the southern hemisphere's summer into February. Human activity is the source of three quarters of harmful gases currently destroying the ozone layer. Nitrous oxide, a greenhouse gas emitted by many industries, is the biggest threat. But nitrous oxide is also produced and released by soil and marine bacteria found living off tropical islands, salt marshes and peat bogs. At its most depleted, around the turn of the 21st century, the ozone layer had declined by about 5%. Now for more on this, we are now being joined by Eric Solheim from Oslo in Norway. He's the former UN Environment Executive Director and Under Secretary General of the United Nations. Welcome to the broadcast, Eric. Thank you so much. My pleasure. This is a great day. Right, absolutely. You know, we've spoken multiple times on the show on Vyond's Climate Tracker. It's very rare that we discuss positive news for the planet. Now, this, of course, is great news. But can you put it into perspective? What does this mean for our planet's health? This is a textbook example of how we should act when it comes to the environment. First scientists at the time in the United States and Mexico, they rang the bell of warning. Then citizens start, starting putting pressure on governments. Then governments came together in Montreal Protocol to make the Montreal Protocol. And then business uh, made all the changes we need. We have a lot more air conditioning on the planet now than we had at the time. A lot more refrigerators at the time, just they don't destroy the ozone layer. And that will save us millions of cases of skin cancer. It's a massive positive effect on agriculture. So this is a real day of celebration. The ozone layer will come back by 2050 in the shape it was before we started destroying it. And that's certainly positive news. Uh, it's also encouraging because, you know, on this show, we often talk about taking climate action. We say that the time to act is now, whether it is the government action or as individuals, what we can do to make a change. And once again, the healing of the ozone layer shows that our action at an individual level can actually help restore the balance. What's your view on the same? No, I mean, absolutely. <laughs> of course, every citizen in warm nations like say India, they want 
air conditioning, but now that you can safely buy air conditioning, which is not destroying the planet. But of course, the, the latest action came from China, because in, in about 2017, 2018, we were on a good trajectory when it comes to the repairing the ozone layer. But then all of a sudden, we realized that there is an uptick in emissions. And scientists said this is probably in China. I spoke to the environment minister of China of the day, Li Ganzhe, and he told me, I will take action. I will fix this problem. And then the Chinese government worked with the producers in some of the coastal provinces. They were not the big industries. There were some smaller producers, probably of insula foam insulation. And now they have brought this under control in China. So these emissions have stopped. And we now see any, no major emissions anywhere in the world. It's great news. And in this case, China should be thanked. Right. Uh, thanks, Eric, for all those updates. And thanks for joining us on Vyond's Climate Tracker today. Thank you. Vyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.